It's June. Welcome to the Teens Cornerstone Connections lesson. This quarter, we're looking at unrequited love. Um, for our panelists, we have Michelle, Amani, Richard, and our teens teachers. On sign language, we have Joyce. Our special item today is coming from Gifted. And my name's Amy, and I will be taking you through the mission story. Spring, school, and Sabbath. Today, our mission story comes from Armenia. And before I start, I would like to start with a fun fact from Armenia. Armenia was the first country to make Christianity the official religion. In the 1930s, the government didn't want people worshiping God, so they destroyed many Adventist churches, and people had to worship in secret. Today, we're looking at Susanna's life. And this particular day, she came home sad. And she told her mother, Mother, we have a spring talent show at school, she said. Mother was surprised because usually Susanna loved participating in school activities. They both sat down to talk on their couch. And Susanna told her mother that the teacher had announced that there is a, there's a school event that the children would be participating. It's a special two-hour program to celebrate the arrival of spring. And the teacher told Susanna that she would be reciting a poem in our, by an, an Armenian poet and sing an Amer Armenian song with the school choir. Teacher said that all children will have to take part, but the talent show will be on Sabbath. Now, mother understood why um, Susanna was sad. Let's pray about this, she said. Everything is in God's hand. The most important thing for us is to show our love to God by keeping his law. Susanna knew that the, what the fourth commandment said, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. Exodus 28 to 10. School and, program, school, and school programs were work. Mother prayed, Dear Father, we thank you for this day you for the opportunity you have given Susanna to participate in the spring talent show and for the talents that you have given her. We want to keep your law and be faithful to you. We ask that you allow us to participate in this show if it is your will. Amen. Susanna was calm after the prayer. She went to her bedroom to do her homework. That evening, mother called Susanna's teacher. You know that we are Christians and that the Sabbath is an important day for us, she said. We observe God's commandment, and it is written in the commandments to keep the Sabbath. She asked the teacher if she could select a different day for the talent show. We cannot change the date, the teacher said. There is no other day that is convenient for us, and we have already made the necessary arrangements. There didn't seem to be any way out. But the very next morning, a mother received a call from the teacher telling her, that the date of the talent show had been changed. Mother um, immediately, she thanked the teacher for changing the date of the talent show. Thank you for changing the talent show to another day of the week, she said. I did this only for you, teacher said. Mother couldn't believe her ears. Thank you, thank you, she cried. When Susanna returned home from school, mother told her the good news. The little girl was happy. Her smile was as bright as the sun. She understood that it was important to keep God's laws. She also understood that prayer is very powerful. She could participate in the spring talent show after all. Part of this 13th Sabbath offering will help to open a center of influence where families can learn about the God who answers prayers in Armenia. Thank you for planning a generous offering on June 29th. <speaking in Spanish> Yes. 
Yesu mimi nawe Kando kando ya milima pana dhoru bakali adui yu langoni mwangu Yesu mimi nawe Welcome to lesson 12 of the Teens Cornerstone Collections. This is our second last lesson of this second quarter. And before we begin, I'd like us I'd just like to introduce the panelists on stage and then we can have a word of prayer. I'll start from my right. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Osa. Hi, my name is Richard Muga and I'm glad to be here. Hi, my name is Amanya Buya and I'm happy to be here. Thank you. And my name is Jonan Magana. I'll be leading the discussion in this um, lesson. But before we begin, I'd like to ask Amani to pray with us. Let's pray. Our kind and loving Father, we thank you for giving us a wonderful day to come and share your word today. And we hope we might have a fruitful lesson and everyone's able to understand what all of us will be able to say today. And in Jesus, it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Amani. So our lesson is titled, What Legacy? What Legacy? So for those who have the lessons, you can just flip to lesson 12. For those who do not have the lessons, our story is coming from the book of 2 Kings, chapter 21 and 22, which is also read together with 2 Chronicles, chapter 33. Now those are very two similar books in the Bible. They literally just tell the same story over and over. But before we get into the lesson, there is a very interesting story about a pastor in uh, the Siberian prisons. That's way long ago in the 1900s. And his name was Pastor Mikhail. So Pastor Mikhail was in prison because of his religious beliefs. So when he was in prison, him being a pastor and a religious person, he stuck to his beliefs. He stuck to his faith. But as always, there's always that one big bully in every single place who's just bothering everyone. Now, that prison had a bully named Yuri. Now, Yuri was a really huge guy, probably like a seven-foot basketballer, but then the body of a rugby guy, right? And every night, Yuri would come with his gang of people and scream, I want blood. And they'd beat someone up so hard. Every day, someone had to be taken to the infirmary because of the injuries they got. So one night, as Pastor Mikhail was reading his Bible, he came across a verse. That is Luke chapter 10, verse 19. And it says, I give you the authority to trample over all the power of the enemy. Now, Mikhail felt like God was speaking to him to make a change in this place that he was in. So what did he do? The next day, Yuri came around. Pastor Mikhail went and held Yuri's arm and told him, you do not have to do this. So Yuri was like, okay, I respect you because you're a man of God and you do not bother other people. So I will listen to you. And so Pastor Mikhail sat down with Yuri and they spoke for an hour. And Pastor Mikhail gave him his backstory, how he became changed to become a Christian. And Yuri and his gang sat down and listened. One hour gone, two hours gone, three hours gone. 
until the prison guards had to come and switch off the lights. The next day, Yuri did not go beating people. He came to Pastor Mikel and asked him, tell me more about the word of the Lord. Why am I giving this story? One man can change the world. That is something we always say, but we don't really believe. What happened in this prison is almost every prisoner in that Siberian prison got converted because of this one pastor, Pastor Mikhail. So there is a lot that you guys can do in your spaces, at school, at church, or at home. You just have to take the step of faith. And Christ tells us, you know, we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. We just need to take the step of faith. Okay? So now we'll get into our lesson. And, so, uh, mm-hmm. our lesson talks about Manasseh. So long ago, Manasseh had spoken to his people, but they paid no attention, both Manasseh and his people. So the Lord came against them through the army commanders of the king of Syria, who took Manasseh as a prisoner and put him inside prison. Manasseh wasn't able to like it there. Since the, they put a hook on his nose, bound him to bronze shackles, and took him into Babylon. In his distress, he sought the favor of the Lord, prayed day and night until one day the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that it was the Lord. Afterwards, Manasseh rebuilt the, city, the walls of the city that had been destroyed in the west of Gihon, spring in the valley, as far as the entrance of the fish gate and encircling the hill of Ophel and he made it much higher. Afterwards, he got rid of all the foreign gods and removed all the idols and images from the temple of the Lord, as well as all the altars he had built. On the temple, on the temple hill and in Jerusalem, and then he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings and blessed it. The other events of Manasseh's reign, including his prayer to the Lord and the words the seer spoke to him about the Lord. He prayed his prayer and how God was moved by his entreaty, as well as all his sins and unfaithfulness, and the sites where he built high places and set up Asherah poles and idols before he humbled himself. All these are written in the records of the seers. Manasseh rested with his ancestors, and was buried in the palace. And afterwards, Ammon, his son, succeeded him as the king. Ammon was 22 years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem for two years. He did evil in the eye of the Lord, as was his father, and he worshipped and offered sacrifices to all the idols Manasseh had made. But, But unlike his father Manasseh, He did not humble himself before the Lord. Ammon increased in guilt. And so Ammon's officials conspired against him and assassinated him in his palace. Then the people of the land killed all who had plotted against the king Ammon and made his son Josiah king in the palace. All right. Thank you so much, Richard, for that. So that is basically our story for today. And we are reading through three generations of kings, right? We see the very first one was Manasseh. Manasseh, a very evil guy, but he makes a turnaround later in his life, like right at the very last minute. Then his son comes in, and his son is even worse than him, okay? So his, son's, his son reigns a shorter time, two years only. That's what we read in Second Chronicles 33. Then now his son Ammon is killed, and then Josiah is put into place. And Josiah will see his story next week. But I want, Michelle, could you kindly read for us the Did You Know section? There is something very interesting there. So uh, current research suggests that parents have a lot, of, a lot more influence than they realize. Not only are their kids listening, but more important, they are watching closely and modeling their lives after them. Whether you believe it or not, parents are the biggest influence in their children's lives. But at what point do you begin to assume responsibility for your relationship with God on your own? Thank you for that. 
I, I think we can just answer that question. Um, at times we, we tend as human beings. I think it's a thing that started with our first parents, Adam and Eve. When um, Adam and Eve fell into sin, God came looking for Adam and asked Adam what happened and all that. Adam was like, he blamed. He blamed God, actually. He blamed God. It's the woman you put here. Now, in our lives, we have the same tendency. When things are happening in our lives, when we grow older, we blame our parents quickly. Or the environment was brought up in. We fail to take responsibility. But here's the thing. Parents do actually have a very big role to play in the child's development. Right? The very formative ages, that's between um, 1 to around 12 or 13. Very critical age for children to develop the right character. Actually, the very best age is 1 to 7 years old. That's the time where you shape a child's character. If a child's going to become a liar, if a child's going to become a very good boy or a good girl, that is the time it's going to be decided. But now, um, Amani, at what point do we begin now to take responsibility of our own lives? Um, I think that the point that most of us tend to take responsibility of our own lives is, especially when we become teenagers, uh, a teenage age is where most of us find ourselves in our space and we think we're grown up enough to make our own decisions, our right decisions. And most of the time, it's not always the right decision that we're making. We slip up here and there. And things like depression come up yeah. because you sort of have no one to talk to. Mm -hmm. And you think you know it all and you can sort it all by yourself. All right. Thank you. True, actually. Because, um, like, in our country, Kenya, right, the education system mostly, how it goes is, once you're done with primary school, most people who are not even in boarding schools in primary get to boarding school for the first time in high school. That's between just around 13 to around 18 years old. So that's around the time we start taking charge of our own lives. But then now back to our story. Um, Amani, what do you think, Section? Um, what do you think are the most essential qualities in a leader? And we are going to rank them in order of importance, one being the most important and eight being the least important. Mm -hmm. So we have confidence, compassion, humility, selflessness, courage, honesty, wisdom, and perseverance. Mm -hmm. and so what do you think is the most important quality in a leader for you? For me, the most important quality in a leader will be wisdom. Because as a leader, you need to have the wisdom to sort of lead the people that you're leading. And without the wisdom, I don't think you're quite able to do that. That's why I think it's the most important. All right. What do you think is the least important quality in a leader? Um, compassion. Compassion, uh-huh, uh-huh. In terms of compassion, as a leader, it's not something that's very much needed mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're in that position you, the people want, want you to lead and guide. Lead, yes. Mm -hmm. All right. And I don't think we quite need compassion to do that. Okay. Yeah. All right. Interesting. Interesting. Richard, what do you think? What's the so, most important quality according to you? Sorry. <laughs> so for me, I think it's wisdom, as mm -hmm. Amani has said. Yeah. Because... For, let's give examples of our leaders in our country. They have to be able to tell the difference between this and that, because, you know, at times 
you might go here making deals that are not supposed to be made True. then you go into losses or you go here making right deals and then the country still suffers all right uh-huh. and even in our local in school in churches mm-hmm. leaders have to have wisdom because as a leader your work is to guide those who are following you following you all right yeah. uh-huh. what's the least important according to you I'm at all to say compassion. Compassion. Okay. Yeah. All right. Michelle, yep. what are your thoughts? Well, uh, for me, I feel like the most important quality that a leader should have is humility uh, towards God and also towards other people. Through that, you'll receive blessings. True. All right. Different take. Uh, what's the least importance according to you? Uh, I'll have to agree with my fellow panelists that mm. it's compassion. Compassion. Okay. Yeah. Um, I would go for wisdom as well, being the most important, because uh, taking example from Solomon, right, I mean, with wisdom, he got literally everything else, right, humility and all, okay, humility not so much, let's say in life, but with wisdom came a lot of other things as well, and the least important, I'd go with, um, in a leader, I will go with, uh, oh, this is a tough choice. I think I'd go with confidence. <laughs> um, I feel if a leader is wise, people will listen to him. With wisdom, you'll know how to approach different issues. You won't really need confidence to do that for you. Um, most of our leaders in the current age, they are confident, they are charismatic, but they lack the wisdom to speak to people. So that's why I feel wisdom is the least important, um, according to me. So uh, thank you for that, Amani. Now, as we move on, um, there is a verse we get in uh, the Monday part of the lesson. That's connecting to life part when you just flip to the other side. And that verse is from Second Chronicles chapter 33, verse 12 and 13, which is our key text. And I will ask Michelle to read that for us, our key text. Second Chronicles 33, verse 12 and 13. Uh, in his distress, he sought the favor of the Lord his God and humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors, and he prayed to him. The Lord was moved by his entity, entity and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord is God. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, so as we've just heard from the, the story that Richard read for us, the end of the story, Manasseh lived a really wicked life, and he made a turnaround when he got captured from his own kingdom and taken to a prison. Now we have a question here in our Monday part. Are there areas of your life in which you are getting a wake-up wake call? Manasseh's wake-up call was when he was in prison. Are there areas in your life, just think about it, don't really have to tell us, even uh, our viewers as well, are there areas of your life that you feel need a wake-up call? Just think about it. What are those areas, right? And as I had said before, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Christ has promised us the strength to do anything and everything. So that one area in your life that you feel you're struggling in, Write it down and put it to the Lord in prayer and it's going to help you through it. All right? I want us to just move back a bit to the story. And I'll ask Richard to just guide us through the, some of the questions in the out of the story section. Probably like uh, two or three questions. So some of, the most, some of the most critical questions that I picked up were, one of them was, what do you think is the most difficult challenge for a king or a leader? Because this question is very important because we all have our different challenges Mm -hmm. as leaders, prefects, captains. Yeah. So. What do you think? (laughs) For me, I think it's um, the pressure they get from, you know, as a leader, people demand a lot from you. Yeah. Uh, Your skills. uh, You need to provide for them what they need. Mm -hmm. Like, let's give example, in a school setup, yeah. uh, from a leader, they demand that at times, you can find that the students demand that um, maybe they need better facilities mm-hmm. from their teacher, that yeah. is, mm-hmm. better facilities, better reading equipments, and so you see that puts him under pressure since 
he has to know how to go and convince provide, yeah. the head of the school to provide those necessities. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you feel pressure is one of the difficult challenges that leaders face. Yeah. All right. Amani, what do you think? Um, I'd probably have to go with confidence. Confidence. And mm-hmm. I think confidence is after a certain period that you've come into office, mm-hmm. I think the leaders struggle with confidence to face the people because maybe they have their promises, they have not yet accomplished their yeah. promises. Mm-hmm. Therefore, they, whenever the leader goes out, people are screaming words at him, yeah. protests are happening, and that sort of lowers your confidence if you you weren't able to meet the targets of the people that you are. True, true. Well, what do you think, Michelle? Well, I think that I'll refer to the B- uh, Bible characters who are leaders. Mm-hmm. I think the hardest challenge they had was sticking to God's laws and ways. True, yes. Uh, like mm-hmm. we see from the story of Manasseh, uh, God was warning him on worshipping idols and all of that, but uh, he refused to heed to God's warning. And at the end of it all, he was imprisoned, and later on, he realized he had a fault, and he changed. True. I think that's, yeah. Yeah, um, I think we have come to a point in the world where the sense of right or wrong is just based on what I think about what is right and wrong, according to me. We have completely thrown away God's law, which, was, which still is the basic foundation of everything leadership and right and wrong. So I agree with that. Uh, Richard, what other question do you have? For the next question, uh, to what degree do parents shape their children's faithfulness in God? Um, for me, that question, when it came into my mind, I really thought of it, and I can say that... Uh, the way parents shape their faithful, faith, God's faithfulness into their children does, doesn't have a degree. Because even as we grow older, we know that our parents also get wiser as they, as they grow older and stand firm in God's faith. So every day they try to build us up in God's word mm-hmm. by giving us advice, uh, words that can encourage us and different things. So I don't think it has a degree. Okay. Yeah. Um, I think what I'd say on that is um, the Bible says in Proverbs, train up a child in the way he should go. When they're old, they'll not depart from it. So first and foremost, parents have, a relationship, have the um, responsibility to lay down the foundation for faithfulness to God. Taking Manasseh's example, Manasseh wasn't the best example of a parent. True or not true? True, oh. right? I mean, he did the worst of things. So his son saw what his father did, and he came and did worse. Okay? There's, that's what always happens. Um, when our parents, I know some parents are also watching this, when you as parents make a fault or do a good thing, your children are going to magnify that. So once you get older, you tend to realize you do some things in a certain way. You don't know why, but in most cases, it's because you saw your parents do it. Okay, so parents do have a really big influence in the children's faithfulness and even their the growing up as well. Thanks for that, for that Richard. So um, as we move on, I'd like to ask Michelle to read for us the flashlight. Um, uh, it's from Prophets and Kings, page three, 384. It says, Born of a wicked king, beset with temptations to follow in his father's steps, and with few counselors to encourage him in the right way, Josiah nevertheless was true to the God of Israel. Warned by the errors of past generations, he chose to do right instead of descending to the low level of sin and degradation to which his father and his grandfather had fallen. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you get from the flashlight? What insights do you have from both that flashlight and what uh, Ellen White speaks about it in Prophets and Kings? Uh, I feel like uh, the insight I get uh, is the influence of parents, uh, the influence they have on their children. We see that, uh, like, for example, Manasseh, 
the father of Manasseh used to sin. He used to worship idols. Yeah. Uh, and Manasseh followed the same steps. Uh, Ammon, his son, also worshipped idols more mm-hmm. than the father. But we see that Josiah uh, learned from the errors of the past and chose to do what is right before God. True, true. Thank you for that. Um, and I think one of the qualities we can pick about a good leader, thank you for that, Michelle, is uh, in James chapter 4, verse 10. James 4, verse 10. Uh, it's also in our punchlines. I'll ask uh, Amani to read that for us. That should be the third punchline. It says, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will lift you up. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that is a really big quality in leadership because uh, we see Manasseh wasn't exactly humble at the beginning. But God forced him to be humble. Uh, the, the Bible also says, you know, those who will exalt themselves, him, they will I bring down. That's the Lord speaking. But those who humble themselves before me, I will lift them up. Now, Manasseh, realizing his fault, that's when he humbled himself and God actually lifted him up in his last days of his life. Um, getting another verse as well about our leaders, that is Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. I'll ask Richard to read that for us. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve of what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Richard. So what do you get from that about good leadership and leaving a good legacy? So what I think about is that as a leader, you shouldn't get comfort because as a leader you come, it also comes with many priorities. Money, the fame you get, and all that. So even as we get this, for example, the money, we should not, because money is like an idol. Yes, it is. It yeah. can attract us and then make us forget about God's word and draw far away from him. Mm-hmm. So money being the idol, we should try as much as possible to stick to God's word and not to be conformed to the things of the world. All right, thank you for that. Um, as we're almost uh, coming to a close of it, I'd like to ask to read, uh, sorry, we just read that, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 1. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 1. We have all these verses in our punchlines. Uh, let me just read that. So it says, Remember your Creator in the days of your youth, for the days of trouble come and the years approach, when you will say, I find no pleasure in them. Now, this is a very perfect verse. We're going to learn about this in our next lesson, about Josiah's life. So, Ellen White says in uh, Prophets and Kings that Josiah had a group of counselors who advised him on the way forward. Remember, Josiah became a king at a very young age. The guy was less than 20 years old, right? And he was ruling a whole country. So he needed people who were wise around him. And this wisdom, because his father before him did not have this wisdom of the Lord, he had to get this wisdom from other people, these are elder people. And in remembering his creator, as a young person, God helped him to lead the nation of Israel, okay? And that goes to us as young children, I mean young people, all right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there is a lot the Lord can do for us if we just gave him the time to do it, okay? And uh, I'd like to just bring up something that has really, uh, it's really something that's picked up in our generation today. Most of the times when someone does something wrong or when someone is, making a certain decision, most people just tend to say, just leave them alone. That's yeah. how they are. That's how they are accustomed to being. Yes. And some of us cling to our own mistakes, saying that it's in our genetics, right? We are not trapped in our genetic makeup. It's one thing I like to tell people, you know. Abraham, perfect example. His father was an idolater, worshipped idols. But Abraham was the greatest man we know, one of the greatest people we know in the Bible. In literally almost, I mean, in Christianity, in Islam, in Hebrew culture as well, they revere him. But this man 
despite from coming from a background of idolaters, he worshipped God. He changed. Let me go even further, bring a bit controversial. Most of us in our schools or in our um, interactions with other people, we speak to friends who um, are aligned with the LGBTQ community as well. And most of them claim there's a, genet there's a gene yeah. that makes me this. We are not bound by our own mistakes. Some of us, some of you, as well as our viewers, might think that I cannot change where I am. I found myself here. There's nothing I can do. We can change. God can help us change. I repeat the verse again. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. True. Like Manasseh, once we realize our faults and humble ourselves before God, he's going to exalt us and make us do better and become better people in our lives. But now the question I want us to just think about is, how can we move closer to God and be more faithful in leading his life, his way in our lives? How can we become better people? How can we integrate God more into our lives? Just get a few comments from you guys as we close up. How do you think we can integrate God into our lives, Michelle? Mm. Uh, for me, I think uh, obeying his laws and accepting that maybe when we, uh, when we sin, okay, we don't sin so that God can forgive us. We just have to be cautious of the things we do, not just doing, knowing that God will forgive you, God has grace, such things. But I think following God's ways. It's the way to go. Yeah. Thank you for that. So do not take advantage of God's grace. Yeah. Thank you for that, Michelle. Richard, how yeah. can we integrate God and move closer to God in our lives? So just as Michelle has said, when we sin, no, repentance is also good. But if we get used to sinning, thinking that God will forgive us, as Michelle has said, it will become a habit. And God will see that and we are used to him. Yeah. So when we sin, it's good to go back on your knees, repent, and God is always there. There's a verse in the Bible, I'm not sure, that says when we stumble, God is always there to ready to bring us back up. The book of Psalms, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. So when we feel we have faults at God, we should generally go back and repent. Thank you. Amani? I think I'll have to agree with Michelle and Richard that we shouldn't take advantage of God's grace. And we need to try and avoid slipping up and making mistakes. We need to avoid it as much as possible. And as soon as we commit a sin and then we realize we have to go and we have to repent and ask God for his forgiveness. Thank you yes. for that. Thank you for that. So we come to the end of the lesson today. Thank you for joining us. And just to close up, uh, Steps to Christ, Ellen White, page 46 says, The true joyous life of the soul is to have Christ formed within the hope of glory. There is no greater joy. There is no source of joy outside Christ. Having Christ in our lives, we have literally everything that we need. I'll ask Michelle to close the word of prayer. Uh, let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we come before you. Thank you for the session we had. May we apply what you've learned, and may you be with us from here onwards. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.